Did you know that to pause any YouTube video, simply tap the space bar on your laptop, PC or tablet? On your phone, tap the screen to pause or click on the pause icon on the play slash pause tracking bar at the bottom of your screens. Conversely, to continue to play the video, simple repeat the steps just mentioned. Tap the space bar to pause or play. This is helpful when you want to take notes or go away from your screen. Today's pattern presented by Ron Blackwelder is the Rainbow Warrior or Rainbow Nymph. The materials needed are on your screen. Remember, pause slash play when needed. And now here is Ron. Good morning. Uh, again, two things uh, we're recording today. This is this this fly is not on our YouTube channel yet, and uh, it's new this year. To so even the returnees have not tied this at least in class. Uh, and please, uh, background conversations keep uh, at a minimum and turn off your cell phones. We are recording. Okay, today we're tying a rainbow warrior nymph or midge uh, typically it's tied on a size 16 scud hook or smaller we're going to tie on a 14 because i want you to uh, get used to the proportions and uh, you know learn to use the materials and so forth um, this this fly was developed by a fellow named lance egan in utah and I don't know when, but it's been around a while. And if, and if you look on YouTube, you'll find a whole lot of variations. But to the best of my knowledge, and the one I like to tie and fish, is this original, uh, pretty much original Egan pattern. Let's get started. <clears throat> okay, here's an image of the Rainbow Warrior that we're going to be tying. Uh, so, first step, as always, I'm going to debarb my hook. Number of reasons, but one of them particularly helpful on flies that you use a bead on, it uh, helps that bead go on a little easier. And for this size hook, and for a size 16, we'd be, we're using a 3 seconds silver metal bead. As you recall from previous classes, uh, when you apply the bead to the hook, the small hole goes on first. If you uh, put the, big, the larger hole on first, then it can, it actually can, on some cases, completely cover the eye of the hook. And when you're out there trying to tie a fly on in the 20 mile an hour wind and 32 degree temperature, it makes it impossible. Okay, that bead, we're using red. Uh, I'm using six aught thread. I like to use a heavier thread on pretty much any midge that I tie because it adds a little bit more weight I think you can use a dot uh, just as well I'm going to tie a short thread base just enough to secure my thread and then we've got got pheasant tail you want to get six or eight or so barbules of pheasant tail when you're we talked about this before when we use pheasant tail it doesn't work very well to rip that off so bring it out about a 90 degree to the 
to the stem and cut it off. That it makes it uh, much easier. You've got all of your tips then are pretty, pretty well even. Okay, an important part of this fly, it has a very... How much are you tearing off? Just a little or... What do you mean? Okay. Uh, six or eight strands. Um, this, this fly has a very stubby tail. So it's only about a third of the length of the hook shank. Mm -hmm. So lay that, uh, lay that on your, gra grasp it, lay it on the hook, and then that's about, that's about the length I want. So I'm going to switch hands and grasp it in my left hand, come back and make several wraps to secure that at the, right behind the bead, and then make thread wraps all the way back. into the bend of the hook as if you so another characteristic of this fly that uh, is not uh, it's it's different than you see on some flies it's got a long tail that sticks straight back behind it well this tail kind of kind of follows the curve of the the hook a little bit and I'm going to go back and trim my excess pheasant tail. Now we're going to use this pearl tinsel. It's size large, color pearl, and it's a it's a flat tinsel. So you've got pieces of that. Okay, I'm going to take the end of that and secure it right back where I finished tying off the, the pheasant tail. Then advance my thread back up to behind the bead. I'll do a half hitch to secure that. All right, you might be tempted to wrap this tinsel with just grabbing it with your fingers, but it, it really works out better if you tie it in well to begin with. So, no big deal, I'll take my thread back, back to the bend of the hook. retie that and then bring my thread back up behind the bead. Okay, as I was saying, if you have a long enough piece, you, you might be tempted to, to just grab the, the tinsel with your fingers and that would that would be okay, but but I find I tend to lose my grip sometimes, so I'm going to use my hackle plier and start making overlapping wraps. Overlap it ab about halfway over each over the previous wrap. Make those wraps that come up to the bead. Bring my bobbin up behind couple of times, tie it off, and then I put a couple of wraps in front. Now, as I look at this, I see a little bit of red thread exposed there at the back. I could have come back a little, little farther with my tinsel, but uh, I suspect that red tab back there won't make any difference. Okay, now, you want to keep your tinsel flat 
and fold it back toward the bend of the hook right on top of the shank but keep it flat and keep it on top of the shank and come back and tie it down back about an two hook eye widths or an eighth of an inch or so Next we're going to apply the dubbing, make a little thorax. And I can't emphasize, this is a small fly, we're not trying to, to make a whole body or anything like that, so I can't emphasize enough, you don't need much dubbing. And like we've done before, I would, uh, you might, might want to use dubbing wax on the thread and make a really thin noodle of, of dubbing. Then, starting right there where you had tied off the tinsel, start making some wraps up toward the bead come back you want to build this up you know with several layers redo my noodle okay tear off that dubbing and secure it right behind the bead it's got a lot of stragglers. This, uh, by the way, this is uh, called, sow, called sow scud dubbing. It, uh, the, what we're using is a product from Wapsi. Uh, and this, this is in rainbow color. It, it comes in, if you look on the back of the package over there on the materials <laughs> table, uh, it comes in probably 20 colors. But this is a rainbow warrior, and we're using rainbow dubbing. Okay, now grasp the tinsel and fold it over the top of your thorax. Keep it, keep it flat. We, we're going to make a little wing case. So keep it flat, hold it in place, and tie it in right behind the bead. wraps behind the tinsel then make a couple wraps in front just to help make sure it's secure and then carefully trim off the excess tinsel if you go too deep trying to cut you know, get a really close cut on your tinsel uh, I can guarantee you you're going to cut your thread so you don't need to be that close with it all right we're going to Whip finish. <coughs> oh, eventually. About four or five wraps with the whip finisher. And tie it off always you know pull tight after you after you've done your whip finish pull tight on the thread to make sure it cinches down really close and trim it now come back and 
trim off some of the stragglers. There's a rainbow warrior. Really?